guys welcome back all right so now we're starting our discussion of the facial bones the other set of bones that will be sharing in the formation of the skull so first and the largest facial bones that we are looking at today it's the mandibular bone the two mandibular bones which are fused together to form the mandible so if we're looking on here at the mandible what we can see we can see that the mandible is going to be divided into two main parts the body of the mandible and the ramus of the mandible so two parts are forming the mandible body and ramus so you see i have two bodies and two rami Also, what we can see on here are those tiny holes in the anterior aspect related to the shin. If you remember something related to the shin, is called mental. So what do we call the foramen, the hole in the anterior aspect of the mandible? This is my mental foramen mental foramen mental foramen looking on here this is going to be my mental foramen the opening on the anterior aspect of the mandible this is my mental foramen we have another foramen but this time it's on the inside of the ramus looking on here it's on the inside of the ramus. We call this foramen is my mandibular foramen. So again, again, what we mentioned so far in the mandible, you can see two parts of the mandible. First is gonna be the body of the mandible. Second is gonna be the ramus of the mandible. two foramina that we've seen and anterior one related to the shin is going to be my mental foramen and the one on the inside of the ramus is called the mandibular foramen mandibular foramen mandibular foramen we can see also in the mandible two processes An anterior one, this is called my coronoid process. Coronoid process. This one on here. And this one on here is going to be the posterior one, is going to be the mandibular process. And the mandibular process, if you see, it has an oval or elliptic shaped articular surface. Where did we see an elliptic shaped articular surface earlier today? Where did we see elliptic shaped articular surface early today? Do you remember? Where did we see an elliptic shaped articular surface? Anybody? Do you remember 
those elliptic shaped articular surfaces that we've seen on the inferior side of the of the skull. What did we call those ones? Occipital condyles. Occipital condyles, exactly. So here I have an elliptic shaped articular surface, but not in the occipital bone, it's in the mandible. So what do you think we're gonna name them? Those are my mandibular condyles. So the mandibular condyle is this elliptic shaped articular surface of the mandibular process. Anteriorly, we've seen this ones here, those, this process is called my coronoid process. Coronoid process. Coronoid process. So again, again, what we've seen so far in the mandible, we've seen in the mandible two parts. We've seen the body of the mandible and the ramus of the mandible. And this is on the other side. We've seen two holes, one on the anterior surface and one on the inside of the ramus. What do we call the one on the anterior surface related to the shin? This is my mental foramen. And what do we call the one on the inside of the ramus? This is my mandibular foramen. We've seen two processes. An anterior one this is called my coronoid process and the posterior one this is my mandibular process remember the mandibular process has a rounded surface that would be my articular surface on here. What do we call this articular surface? It's my mandibular condyle. Mandibular condyle. So again, again, what we're looking at in here, this is gonna be my mandibular process. And here is my mandibular condyle. This is my coronoid process. On the inside of the ramus, I have my mandibular foramen. On the outside, this is gonna be my mental form. Questions, questions. All right, moving on to other facial bones. Next facial bone is gonna be the bones that will share in the formation of the upper jaw. This is called my maxilla or my maxillary bone. Look at on here. This is one 
maxillary bone. This is one maxillary bone. Also, if we're looking here as a continuation of the maxillary bone, we will see that it forms the anterior two thirds of the heart palate. The heart palate is the bony part of the roof of your oral cavity. So if you're moving your tongue upwards, you're gonna touch the roof. This roof, the anterior two thirds of it, it's part of the maxillary of the maxillary bone or the maxilla. The anterior two thirds. of the heart palate is part of the maxillary bone or the maxilla. So what do we call here? This is my palatine process. The anterior two thirds of the heart palate is part of my maxillary bone. And again, what do we call this part of the maxillary bone that forms the anterior two thirds? It's gonna be the palatine process. Palatine process. This is my palatine process. So how many facial bones did you see so far? two maxillary bones, two mandibular bones forming a single one, which is my mandible forming the lower jaw. You can see on here, two small bones that will share in the formation of the nose. And remember something related to the nose is nasal. So what do we call those bones on here? Those are my nasal bones. Nasal bones are gonna be connected to the nasal cartilage. This is the part that you are gonna feel. Just above this cartilage part in here, you're gonna feel the nasal bones. So when a person breaks his nose, it's simply a break of the attachment between the nasal cartilage and the nasal bone. Do you remember what kind of cartilage did we have in the nose? What kind of cartilage did we have in the nose? What kind of cartilage? Hyaline cartilage, hyaline cartilage, yes. Hyaline cartilage, elastic, elastic was located in the ear penna or external ear and the epiglottis. But remember hyaline, remember the respiratory system. Nose, larynx, trachea rings, coastal cartilages, All right, so what we're looking at in here, those are my nasal bones. If we're looking at the inside of the orbit, on the medial side of the orbit on here, you'll see a rectangular shaped bone that has a depression, a hole in it. This is called my lacrimal bone. My lacrimal bone. Lacrimal, lacrimal means related to tears. This is where I will keep a sack that will store the tears for me. This is called the lacrimal sac lacrimal sac so all the time you're going to be producing tears and those tears are going to be washing your eyeball and will be accumulated within the lacrimal sac for them to be drained later on 
all right but if you are crying for example you have excessive secretion of the of your tears and this will exceed the ability of the lacrimal sac inside the lacrimal bone to accommodate this amount of tears so you're going to have tears dropping from your eyes but normally if you're not crying you are always producing tears to lubricate and to wash your eyeball so again where all those tears will go they will go to the lacrimal sac which is going to be kept in this hole of the lacrimal bone lacrimal bone Moving on to another facial bone that we can see on here. It is a bone of the cheek. What do we call this bone on here? It's my zygomatic bone. Zygomatic bone. Remember, zygomatic bone was attached to the temporal bone by the zygomatic process. Again, zygomatic process is part of which bone zygomatic bone or temporal bone zygomatic process is part of which bone zygomatic bone or temporal bone what do you think it's part of my temporal bone temporal bone another facial bones that you can see on here it's my Vomer's bone. And if you see on here, Vomer is forming the lower part of the nasal septum. So it shares with what bone on, the, on here? What bone is this? What bone is this that is marked for you? What is this bone? It's my ethmoid bone. Remember, this is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. It forms the upper two thirds, upper two thirds of my nasal septum. The lower one third, you see on here, is going to be formed by another bone called vomer. Look at on here, the lower one third. Is going to be formed by another bone. This is called my vomer's bone. Vomer. You can see the vomer, the continuation of vomer, forming the whole septum if you kept moving backwards, like this. See on here? This is my vomer from a posterior view. And this is Vomer from an anterior view. So again, this is Vomer from an anterior view. And this is Vomer from a posterior view. Another facial bone that we've got in here is going to be sharing in the formation of the heart palate. Remember, what did we call this? anterior two-thirds of the heart palate those are my palatine palatine processes the palatine process is forming the anterior two-thirds and remember palatine process is part of my maxillary bone or the maxilla the posterior two one-third the posterior one-third that you're looking at in here it's another bone, not part of the maxilla. It's called the palatine bone. Palatine bone. Palatine bone. So again, again, what we're looking at in here, we're looking at the heart palate. The heart palate is formed by the palatine process of the of the maxilla and the palatine bone uh, which is a separate bone from the maxilla it's one of the facial bones so how many facial bones did we see so far 
One, two, three. Then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and one more on here. Is this going to be my inferior or lower nasal conch? Inferior or lower nasal conch on here. It's a separate bone. So if I remove all the other bones that this is articulating with, I will see that it's a separate bone. This is my lower or inferior nasal conch. How about the superior and middle nasal conchi? Those are part of the ethmoid bone. Those are part of the ethmoid bone. So again, again, what did we see? We've seen the eight cranial bones. We've seen the 14 facial bones on here. So again, again, Mandible is going to be one bone, but actually it's formed of two fused mandibular bones. Two fused mandibular bones. So if we're looking here, mandible, one, two, three, four, five, six, then lacrimal bone, seven, eight, then the two zygomatic bones, nine, ten, to inferior nasal conchi. Eleven, twelve. And finally on here. The palatine box. All right. Any questions? Any questions? So in this textbook, it seems that they are considering the mandible as a single bone, just one bone. Right? Although it's originally formed of two bones that they got fused together. All right, this completes our 14 facial bones. Questions, questions, questions. All right, so moving on at back to the cranial bones, we can see that the cranial bones are attached by joints, and those joints are what we call the sutures. The important sutures that we are looking at in here, first one is going to be the Coronal suture, see here. Coronal suture. What do we call it? Corona. What's corona means? What corona? Corona means what? So you are experts now in corona. Crown. Crown. So you see, coronal suture. Corona suture. Remember, this is where person puts the crown, right? Corona. It's like a crown around, around the head. Right? So corona, corona. Why did we call the virus coronavirus? It has a crown. It looks like a crown. This family of viruses, coronaviridae, looks like a crown. That's why we call them corona. So here is the coronal suture. Coronal suture. It's serving as the attachment between the frontal bone and the two parietal bones on here. 
if you remember, when we studied these sections, the different sections, we mentioned that the section that splits the body into right and left parts, what did we call it? Is it transverse? Is it frontal? It's sagittal. So we would call here this suture that attaches the two parietal bones to one another, it's my sagittal suture, sagittal suture. So again, again, what do we call this one on here? It's my coronal suture. What do we call the ones that would be attaching the two parietal bones together? It's my sagittal suture. And We've got another sutures that would be attaching the two parietal bones to the occipital bone on here. This is my lamboid suture. Lamboid suture. Lamboid suture. Lamboid suture. Lamboid suture. Lamboid suture. The sutures that would be attaching, as you see on here, the temporal bone to the occipital, parietal, and the sphenoid. This is called squamous suture. Squamous suture. This is my squamous suture. Squamous suture. So again, again, what do we call the different sutures? This one on here between frontal and the two parietal bones. This is called my. I'm waiting for an answer. What do we call this one? Between frontal and parietal. What do we call this one? Coronal suture. Coronal suture. coronal suture. What do we call the ones that connects the parietal bone to the occipital bone on here? You see what I'm marking, right? What do we call this one? Lamboid suture, lamboid suture. How about this one that connects the temporal bone to the sphenoid? parietal and occipital. What do we call this suture on here? Squamous suture, squamous suture. So again, again, got coronal suture, lamboid suture, and squamous suture. The ones that will be connecting again, the two parietal bones to one another, it's my sagittal, sagittal suture. Squamous suture is the suture that attaches the temporal bone to the occipital bone and the temporal bone to the parietal bone and the temporal bone to the sphenoid bone. This is the greater wing of the sphenoid bone that you see on the outside of it. So squamous suture is serving as the attachment between the temporal bone and the occipital, parietal, and sphenoid. All right, did this answer your question? Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? My screen is slanted. How? 
how is it slanted? Let me turn off the Is anyone else having trouble? See, look in. Yeah, so you know, maybe because you are trying to access access it from a phone. Maybe because you're trying to access it through a phone. That's why it looks blurry. All right, try to use a uh, larger device. Try to use a larger screen. Try to use a larger screen for you to be able to see better. All right, so try to use another device with a larger screen, maybe. All right. Anyways, those video recordings of those class of those lectures are gonna be posted on the YouTube video uh, on the YouTube channel uh, that I've sent the link for last class. Also, I will send out the link later at the end of the class today. All right, so let's have some questions on here for you to get an impression about how the that's gonna look like very important very important to be able to identify the names not considering that you're gonna have multiple choices on the exam so make sure you are able to identify you are able to write down the name not waiting for not waiting for choices to pick from right you need to be able to identify the different bones and bone landmarks on your own without the need of having choices to pick from, for you to be able to pick from the choices that you're gonna be provided with on the real exam. But don't think that you will be able to figure this out or don't try to do the common mistakes that you think, yeah, so this bone starts with an F, all right, so I will remember that it starts with an F, and I will pick the one that starts with an F on the exam. So don't try to do such things. Don't try to do th such things because simply you're gonna get confused. You're trying, you think you are trying to make it easier for yourself, but you are actually making it harder for yourself to figure them out on the exam. You need to spend enough time to prepare for those exams. All right, this is not an easy course that you can just study in a day or two or before the exams. This is a highly intensive class that contains lots of material. So you need to spend to dedicate enough time to be able to get the grades that you want. All right. All right, so let's answer some questions on here.
What was the last number? What was the last number? What was the last number? Yeah, so it won't be available before before the due date, except for it's going to be available just before its due date for one week, just one week before the due date. So it's not currently available and you can't see it, you can't access it. All right. Yes, I know that it's not available. All right, so last question was question seven on here. So starting eight, nine, and All right, so I would put either bone or marking. So you identify accordingly. So number eight, it's gonna be a marking. Identify the marking. Nine, it's bone. 10, it's a bone. Identify the bone. 11, it's also a bone. 12 is a bone, 13 is a marking, 14. and number 14 is a marking. Number 16 is also a bone marking. All right, I will give you five minutes, but here 15 also is gonna be a mark. To answer those ones. All right, so let's see on here. What did you get for number eight? What did you get for number eight? Coronal suture. About number nine. What did you get? What this bone is here? Number nine. 
maxilla or maxillary bone maxilla or maxillary bone how about number 10 10 what did you get for 10 yeah. this is my nasal bone is it And what did you get here for number 11? This rectangular shaped bone on the inside of the, of the orbit, on the medial side of the orbit. This is my, yeah, I see a few of you. Yeah, here we go, lacrimal bone. Lacrimal bone. How about the bone of the cheek? You remember what did we call this bone? It's my number 12. Yep. Exactly. This is my zygomatic bone. And how about uh, number 13, which is a marking? What did we call the hole on the anterior surface related to the shin? Anterior surface of the mandible related to the shin is called. Yeah, I see a couple answers. And I hope for more. Yes, mental foramen. Mental foramen. Number 14, remember the short broad, broad process behind the ear, it's large. What did we call this process, which is part of my temporal bone? Yeah, a few more. Mastoid process, exact. mastoid process okay how about number 15 you remember what do we call this elevation just above the nose in the frontal bone between the eyebrows in here yep this is my glabella exactly and the difficulty so far so this is simply speaking how your test gonna look like you're gonna have diagrams like this no surprises no surprises on the exam you're gonna be asked to identify a bone to identify a bone landmark or in few cases to identify the articulations that we mentioned all right So for example, if I did have an articulation here, so I'm all... so I'm marking this part on here of the mandible. And instead of asking about the name, for example, what do we name for what do we name this part first? This is my mandibular condyle, if you remember. Mandibular condyle. Instead of asking you to name it, I can ask instead uh, state the bones that articulates with it. So, what is the bone that articulates with it? It's going to be my temporal bone. Temporal bone. All right. And yeah, so we, we skip number 16 here, 16 marking. It's my zygomatic process. For 16, it's the zygomatic process. 16 is a zygomatic process, yes. 
All right. Any questions? Any questions? All right, so moving on to another part of the axial skeleton. This is going to be the vertebral column. You see on here, parts, uh, part of the vertebral column is gonna be traveling, forming the neck. So we call those vertebrae are my cervical vertebrae. They go from C1 to C7. Those are my cervical vertebrae. Then I have the thoracic vertebrae they go from t1 to t12 and then i have the region between the chest and the pelvis this is my lumbar region i have the lumbar vertebrae they will go from l1 to l5 Going downwards, this is going to be the sacrum, which is formed of five fused vertebrae that articulates with the coxal bones to form the pelvis. And articulating with it downwards, this is going to be the coxal bone or the coccyx, which is formed of four tiny fused vertebrae. So again, again, what we're looking at in here, it's the vertebral column. We've got vertebrae in the cervical region. Those are my cervical vertebrae. I will go from C1 to C7. Next are the vertebrae located in the chest. Those are my thoracic vertebrae. And they will be from T1 to T12. And we've got the lumbar vertebrae that will go from L1 to L5. Then we have the sacrum and we have the coccyx. Sacrum is going to be formed by five fused vertebrae compared to the coccyx. It's just four tiny vertebrae fused together. So how can I differentiate if I got like a vertebra, a single one like this, how would I know if this here is is it cervical? Is it thoracic, is it lumbar? How would I know? So the easiest way is to follow a scheme. Follow a scheme in order for you to be able to identify whether this is a cervical vertebra, a thoracic, a lumbar. First, you need to know the basic structures that will build up your vertebrae. If you notice on here, you have a large thick part of the vertebra. This is called the vertebral body. This is a part of the vertebra that holds the weight down for the weight to be transmitted to the other vertebrae. So this is gonna be my vertebral body. If you see 
you have two wings of the vertebra. Those are called the transverse processes. Transverse process. And I have a process that is protruding backward. This is my back. This is the front. This is anterior. This is posterior. On here. So I have a bony process that is protruding backward, and you can actually feel those protruding bony eminences in the back of your neck, in your back. Those are called the spinous processes. And this is going to be the sp spinous process. So again, again, what are the very basic structures that you need to know before you, you are able to identify the type of vertebra? You need to identify here the vertebral body, transverse process, spinous process, and you're going to see a hole. This is where the spinal cord is going to be traveling. See this hole on here? This is going to be my vertebral form. Vertebral form. So again, again, what are the basic structures of the vertebrae that we need to know. First, we need to identify the vertebral body. We need to identify the transverse process. We need to identify the spinous process. We need to identify the vertebral foramen. This is where the spinal cord is going to be traveling less important less important structures are the pedicles which will be connecting the vertebral body to the transverse process so it connects the vertebral body here to the transverse process those are my pedicles this is going to be the pedicle on here and we have the articular surface. So we've got a superior articular surface and inferior articular surface that will allow the articulation between the vertebrae. All right, so very basic structure of the vertebrae again. This is my vertebral body. This is my vertebral body. Those are going to be my transverse processes. And here this is going to be my spinous process. The foramen where the spinal cord is going to be traveling. This is going to be my vertebral form. Vertebral form. All right, so what is the very first thing I want you to check when you look at the vertebra in order to identify what type of vertebra is it? First thing is look at the transverse process. When you look at the transverse process, I want you to notice whether or not it has a foramen. If you look on here, let's shave this one. So.
I want you to check the transverse process. Do I have a hole in the transverse process? Yes or no? This is the first question you need to ask yourself. Do I have a hole in the transverse process? Or not? What do we call the hole if present in the transverse process? This is my transverse form. If you have a transverse form, like in here, it's any cervical vertebra from C1 to C7. Any one of the cervical vertebrae you're going to have the transverse form, a hole in the transverse process. But if you don't have a transverse form, If I don't have a transverse foramen, this means I'm looking at any thoracic or lumbar vertebra. So again, again, what we're looking at in here, first thing we need to check is the transverse process. I want you to check whether or not you have a transverse form. So answer me here. Do you have a transverse foramen in here? Number one. Yes or no? Do you have a hole in the transverse process? Yes. So this tells me what? What I know so far, that this number one is anyone from C1 to C7, any cervical. I don't know which one. How about this on here? What do you think? Look at the transverse process. Do you see a transverse foramen in the transverse process? Do you see a hole in the transverse process? Yes or no? No. Get moving around here. no transverse form so this tells me what this tells me that this vertebra that i'm looking at it's either thoracic or lumbar or in other words it's not cervical how about this one Check the transverse process. Do you have in the transverse process a hole? Do you have a foramen in the transverse process or is it solid? No holes. No holes. So no transverse foramen. This means I am looking at either thoracic or lumbar. All right. So let's check how can we differentiate different types of cervical. Right, so check in C1, check in C2, and one of the remaining C3 to C7. So we're looking here at this one. What should I be checking if I did see a transverse form? It's anyone from C1 to C7. I want you to check next the vertebral body. What do you need to check in the vertebral body, whether you have a vertebral body or not? 
So what do you think? Does this vertebra has a vertebral body or not? Do you see this bulging part in front of the vertebral foramen? Yes, I see a vertebral body. I see a vertebral body. How about this one? About this one. Do you see a vertebral body in front of the vertebral foramen? Do you have this bulging part? No. So if I don't have a vertebral body, no vertebral body. This means I am looking at C1 or atlas. This is my atlas on here. This is my atlas, C1. How did I know? It's a cervical vertebra. First thing, it has transverse foramen. And the th second thing, it doesn't have a vertebral body doesn't have a vertebral, this is atlas or C1. All right, so if I do have a vertebral body, let me show this one. Does this vertebra has a vertebral body? What do you think? Do I have vertebral body, a bulging bony structure in front of the vertebral form. What do you think? Yes. yes, it has one. So if I do have a vertebral body, I'm any one from C2 to C7. Anyone from C2 to C7 gonna have a vertebral body. All right, so what should I be looking at next? I want you to check the vertebral body for a bony eminence. So this is my vertebral body on here. Do I have a bony eminence coming up from the vertebral body, yes or no? See on here? A bony eminence coming from the vertebral body. We call this the dense or odontoid process. What do you think? Do you have this bony eminence in one or not? And do you see a similar one in two or not? What do you think? So do you have it yes or no, or in one? You have it in one first. Yes or no for having a dense and wooden toy process coming out in number one. Yes, I see it. How about in number two? Do you see any bony eminence coming up from the vertebral body in number two? No. So what you're gonna need, need to be looking at next here after you find the vertebral body, you have a vertebral body, you need to check this vertebral body, whether or not it has a dense or an odontoid process. If you do have a dense, this means you are C2, or another name for C2, it's axis. I'm not sure why people get them confused, axis and atlas. Atlas is the guy who holds the earth. So this is C1, the one without the vertebral, vertebral body. Here C2, it has an odontoid process or a dense coming up. And you see here, what is the importance of, of it? You see how the atlas is articulating with the axis? Actually, the articulation between atlas and axis is what allows you to rotate your head from side to side. So the articulation here between C1 and C2 is what allows you to say no. All right, so you see on here, atlas didn't have a vertebral body 
for the dense of the axis to articulate with it. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? So it's like, this is my atlas, this is my axis. I'm rotating around the X, around the dense of the X. All right, so Atlas can rotate like this around the axis created by the dents of the C2 or axis. That's why we call the axis axis. But if I don't have a dense or an odontoid process coming out in here, I don't have a dense or an odontoid process coming out, don't have one. So this means that you are looking at anyone from C3 to C7. And those are pretty much all the choices that you're gonna have. Either C1 Atlas, C2 Axis, or C3 to C7. So if you got a vertebra like this on the exam, you might have it, you might be picking either thoracic, lumbar, C1, C2, C3 to C7. Those are the five choices that you're gonna have. So how can I differentiate the thoracic from the lumbar? Again, we did agree that thoracic and lumbar didn't have a transverse form. This is the very first thing that you need to find. Some people will be in rush and they don't, look at the transverse foramen and they will decide that this is a thoracic or lumbar although it's cervical so you need to not skip this very first step in the identification process uh, it's very important very important to keep following the pattern here until you get used to the identification All right, so looking here at two of my vertebrae on here, one is lumbar and one is thoracic. So again, both of them, what's common in both of them? They both are don't have a transverse form. They don't have a transverse form. No holes in the transverse process. No holes in the transverse process. This tells me I am either thoracic or lumbar. How can I differentiate between the two? The easiest way, in my opinion, is to look at the spinous process. See here the spinous process in the thoracic vertebrae. It's going to be pointed and moving down. So spinous process is my next thing to check. If it's pointing down like this, this tells you that you are dealing with a thoracic vertebra what if it's blunt and horizontal you see i'm not moving down i am traveling in a horizontal way and i'm not pointed it's blunt so if you're dealing with a spinous process that is blunt and traveling horizontally like this you are dealing with a lumbar vertebra. Easy, easy.
questions, questions. All right, so what do you think is this one on here? What is the first thing I need to check? What is the very first thing I need to check? Whether or not I have a transverse form and do I have a transverse form in the one I'm looking at in here? What do you think? Do I have a transverse form? Yes, so it's any one of the cervical vertebrae, any cervical. So what is the next thing is that I need to check? Do I have a vertebral body? Do I have this bulging bony part in front of the vertebral foramen? What do you think? Do you have this bulging part on here? Yes, so I have a vertebral body. So I'm not C1. Do I have a process, a dense coming out? from the vertebral body. Do I have an odontoid process or a dense coming out? Yes, so this is gonna be C2 or axis. How about this one on here? Do I have a transverse foramen? Do I have a transverse foramen that I see here on here? Yes or no? Do I have a hole in the transverse process? Yes. So what is the next thing that I need to check? Whether or not I have a vertebral body. Do I have a vertebral body on here? Do I have a vertebral body? Nobody, nobody. This means I'm looking at C1 or Atlas. How about this one on here do i have a transverse foramen do i have a hole in the transverse process yes so this is a cervical vertebra do i have a vertebral body yes so it's not c1 do i have a dense or an odontoid process a process coming out from the vertebral body on here do I have a process coming out from the vertebral body? No. So this means I am not C1, I'm not C2, I am anyone from C3 to C7. How about this one? Do I have a transverse foramen? Do I have a hole in the transverse process? What do you think? No, I don't. So it's not cervical. It's either thoracic or lumbar. So what is the next thing I need to check? Spinous process. Is the spinous process pointing down or is it blunt and horizontal? In here, is it pointed downward or is it blunt and horizontal? It's pointed downward. So it's going to be Thoracic. Look on here. Do I have a transverse foramen? Do I have a hole in the transverse process? No. So this is not cervical. It's either lumbar or thoracic. I need to look at spinous process. When I look at the spinous process, what I will see is the spinous process blunt and horizontal, or is it pointing downward? It's blunt and horizontal. It's not pointed and it's not moving down. So this tells me I am what vertebra? Lumbar. Anyone from L1 to L5. Here thoracic, anyone from T1 to T12. So we do not need for this course to differentiate between T1 to T12 we do not need for this course to differentiate between L1 to L5. All right. No 
important markings that are required from you to identify on the sacrum. No important markings. So you just need to identify that this is the sacrum and this is the coccyx. No landmarks are required of you. So how would I know which bones and which landmarks am I required to know for this exam? You go to Canvas. And you open Canvas and here. Scroll down in module two. Module two will have the appendicular skeleton bones list and the axial skeleton bones list. And those are the bone markings, PowerPoint slides. Those are the actual slides that we are using. Those gonna have the underlined parts. But remember for the exam, you don't need only to identify the underlined labels in this PowerPoint. You need also to check the bones list. All right, for other information like the articulations, the function of the bone. So when you go on here, today we are done with, almost done with the axial skeleton. So you're gonna see axial skeleton list on here. So those are three pages for the axial skeleton. So you're gonna have the skull bones. So the bones that we've discussed, those are frontal bone, parietal bone, occipital bone, temporal bone, sphenoid bone, ethmoid bone, and you're gonna see the important bone landmarks that you need to identify in each of those bones. This is a PDF file that is under module two called Axial Skeleton Bones List. You're gonna see the different cranial sutures. You're gonna see the different facial bones, all the bones that we have discussed. You're gonna see the vertebral column with the different vertebrae and the important landmarks that you need to know for each of them. All right. So again, again, where can you find this list of bones and bone landmarks? You can find it under module two axial skeleton bones list we're going to be completing the appendicular skeletons the appendicular skeleton next class so you're going to be using the appendicular part so it's very important to get done with the axial today because we're going to be adding a lot more of information next class when we discuss the appendicular skeleton it's very 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 important to get the material done as early as possible to study it for you to get a chance to review it more than once because this is how the information is going to stick to your mind. You also can, can see here a bones review which is going to be simulating the exam. Not all, so this was a previous exam, not all the markings on this review is required from you. So some, for example, like this here. If you notice, this is not something that we've mentioned today. This is called the forum and classroom. And this is not something that you are required to know according to your bond list. So what is required from you is everything on those lists, both the axial, bones list, and the appendicular 
roles list. This is just to give you an impression about how the exam is going to look like. You're going to have pictures of diagrams of different bones, and you're going to have to identify either a bone or a bone landmark or a function or an articulation according to what's addressed in the question. All right, so for example, identify this bone. What do you think? C2 or axis. On the read exam, I usually get you multiple pictures from different views of the same bone. I usually bring you multiple views of the same bone because this view doesn't show the transverse form. Can you remind me what do we call this process coming out from the vertebral body? Can you remind me what did we call this eminence? It's the dense or odontoid process. Do you remember what do we call this part? What do we call the process? What do we call this? bone landmark it's my spinous process spinous process how about this one number 42 here transverse process so what's this hole on here A vertebral form it's very important, very important to test yourself. Make sure you test yourself. Because if you don't know the information while you're testing yourself at home, you won't know it on the exam. So I'm providing you here with, so I'm not sure how to remove this. All right, so I'm providing you with a final review here. This is not a study guide. This is not a study guide. You don't just need to know the information on here, but you need to know the information on the list. And again, where can you find the list? Under module two, you're gonna have two lists, axial skeleton bones list and the appendicular skeleton bones list. Those are the two lists of bones, bone landmarks, all the information function, articulations, everything that might be tested, it's gonna be on this list. So it's very, very important to make sure to study every single word on those lists and to be able to identify them. Yes, definitely everything is gonna be on uh, visible body, yes. So everything is gonna be on your atlas. Many of them, many of them gonna be tested in the assignment, but what is required, even if it's not on your assignment, you still need to know it if it's on those lists. So I have been discussing the list for almost 15 minutes now. All right, so again, appendicular axial skeleton, list bones list, those are the lists of bones that you are required to know for the exam. Here, you're gonna have the name of the different bones and the different bone landmarks that are required from you to be able to identify. Also, in some cases, you're gonna have some information on here stated. And this is the information I mentioned when we discuss the topic, like for example, an articulation. So for example, if you go to the axial skeleton, you will see something that we mentioned here, that the maxilla is the upper jaw. All right, the zygomatic bone is the cheekbone. 
and so on. So you are required to know everything on those lists. And you can't just study this list on its own because it doesn't make any sense. You need to be able to identify those structures and those bones on your diagrams. That's why you're going to have also here provided to you this PowerPoint presentation, which is the bones markings, bone markings, PowerPoint slides. And here I did underline. I did underline the bones that you are required to know from the list. But you can also study this on its own. You still need to have the list with you to make sure that you don't miss any information. Is this clear now, Lodia? All right, so again, again, we have the list. We have the PowerPoint on which I did underline the markings for you, which are on the list. But the list still contains more information than the PowerPoint, so you can't just study the PowerPoint. All right, again, your assignment, your visible body, assignment it's not a source to study from it's a practice tool this is where you should be studying from this is the complete set of information your assignment your lab assignment is a study tool is a practice tool like this one like the bones final review it's a practice tool it's not meant to substitute the list and the PowerPoint. It's not meant to substitute them. All right. Because I, I've noticed that some of you did consider the simple questions of the tissues as a study guide. It's not a study guide. Those are simple questions. Means they are simple questions. A few questions to give you an idea about how the question is going to look like. All right, so Bones final reviews, they have much more questions, but still do not, does not substitute the PowerPoint and the two lists on here. So we are almost done with the Excel skeleton. Please get this done. Study this to get a chance to review it before the actual exam. And the best time for you to study this is today. Don't wait until next week or whenever you get the chance. All right, questions, questions.